We got to start looking at doing things now in anticipation of what might happen. And the reason is if you look at infectious diseases, how they work, particularly outbreaks of new infections, they go like this, then they go like this, and then they shoot up like that. The purpose and the goal of both containment and mitigation is to, instead of making it go up like that, blunt it so it goes like that, you're never going to suppress it completely. So is the U.S. medical system ready for whatever may come? If not, what can we do now? Fox News medical contributor Dr. Nicole Sapphire joins us. Doctor, good to see you again. Thanks for being with us. Hi, Shannon. Great to be here. Okay, I want to read something in Politico. They put it this way. With a potential surge of coronavirus patients, there may not be enough beds, equipment, and staff to handle an epidemic. Executives face tough decisions about who could have to be isolated and, in some cases, need oxygen, ventilators, and protective gear that's already in short supply. So, doctor, how do we prep for this? Are U.S. hospitals ready? Well, Shannon, that is a very legitimate concern, and the truth is a lot of the hospitals are are quite full as it is with flu season and just being uh, viral season in general. Here's the thing that I have concerns with. Our healthcare workers, we all have a shared goal when it comes to containing this virus. Not only do we want to protect our patients and limit spread of the virus, but we also want to protect healthcare workers. A small study that came out of China showed that one third of the patients in one hospital were actually the healthcare workers mm. that had been affected by the patients. And part of that is because the Chinese government initially told their patients that this was not a highly infectious illness. They would test the patients and send them home. And the healthcare workers were not taking appropriate precautions because they didn't necessarily know. However, I can't just put the blame on China because we've actually heard that there's one patient from California that caused 93 healthcare mm. workers in California to go into quarantine, two of which tested positive. They then moved that patient to another hospital which subsequently caused another 124 healthcare workers to go into quarantine. Now, think of it this way. It doesn't matter if there are enough beds. If we don't have healthcare workers to take care mm -hmm. of the patients, what's the sense of having beds? So I personally feel where I work, Memorial Sloan Kettering and New York City hospitals and the majority of hospitals, we're prepared for this. We are taking the appropriate measures, in my opinion, of what we need to do. We are screening patients before they come in. We're telling them not to come in if they don't need to come in necessarily. And it, it, it's essentially, you know, let's do what's best for the patients, but let's also take care of our healthcare workers. The concern about not having enough beds in ICUs is a legitimate one. However, the United States has more healthcare beds than a lot of our counterparts, the UK, many places in Europe, all these places that Bernie Sanders loves to say that they have enough healthcare workers. But the truth is we have more doctors and beds per patient than a lot of these other places do. Yeah, we talked to uh, an ER doctor on Fox News at night within the last week or two who said, I plan to get it. I just think I'm going to be exposed so much to the ER, but what I'm trying to do is keep myself healthy. We've talked about keeping some of our older doctors or those that have underlying medical conditions themselves out of this mix temporarily until we can get things under control and kind of, you know, get a real beat on it. We also talked to Dr. Sam Fink last night. He was on with us. He's actually treating multiple people who are dealing with coronavirus um, with mixed results. He's got some in ICU. Here's what he said last night. Coronavirus is here, but we can limit the number of cases. And when we do that, we limit uh, the number of cases that go to hospitals, that take up beds in the ICU or the rest of the hospital. So I think we can achieve that. You know, we were talking about social distancing with him, and he says, as we heard Dr. Fauci say, we've heard over and over again, it's not like we're going to stop the spread through, through the U.S., but we have to stop that immediate spike that would overwhelm the hospitals. Absolutely, and I heard what Dr. Fauci said today, and I couldn't agree more. We we know that we're going to have more cases. They're going to increase. My husband happens to be a neurosurgeon. He had a bad cold last week. He's like, it could have been the coronavirus. I don't know. The truth is the far majority of people are going to recover, but there are people that are going to be more prone or more vulnerable to having severity of illness. And those are the people we need to protect. So yes, if we have elderly physicians, elderly healthcare workers, elderly patients, we need to focus on them a little bit. Now, I will say that I have been hearing cases that there are some severe symptoms in seemingly otherwise healthy people. But the truth is that happens in flu and that happens in other things too. So we have to be prepared. We can't just assume that one person's going to have severe disease and one person's going to have mild disease. All we can do is do our best, 
and just know that we're going to get through this. We are we are well equipped for something like this. We are we are familiar and educated. We know how to handle airborne illnesses and we know what to do. Yeah. We just need to make yeah. sure that we have the resources. Yeah. All right, Dr. Nicole Sapphire, uh, we know you're working around the clock on air and at the hospital too. So thanks for making time. Good to see you. Thanks for having me.